Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, painting and uh, mounting brown trout, doing a reproduction mount. Now, most of our <clears throat> trout mounts I wouldn't even consider doing as a skin mount. I know there's some taxidermists out there who feel really comfortable with it, have done it a lot, but one of the problems you have with skin mounts anymore is it has to do with shrinkage, and you end up having to build up a lot of layers around areas, and you can't, sometimes if it's out in the scale area, it's very hard. You have to patch it, and then you have to create um, a new pattern over the top of it to artificially reproduce those scales. There's a little work. Now, what most taxidermists are doing if they do skin mounts at all is they're using artificial fins and they're doing using an artificial head, a reproduction. So they'll mount this portion of it here <clears throat> and then they'll, on, on, a, on a styrofoam form, the original skin and then they'll add artificial fins and the head back and attach it. <clears throat> and then they'll fill the seams in and then uh, prime them and paint them. Um, what I do, generally speaking, I, I mean, I don't mind doing bass as a skim out because they have heavier scales and they're a little more forgiving. Uh, but for trout and salmon and things like that with a smaller scale fish, I always hit <coughs> with skin mount. I want to focus mostly on browns today. This is what I'm going to be painting and just want to kind of give you an overview of what's going to be happening with this fish. This fish is a, what we call a premier. The fins came separate and the head came separate and I had to attach them and I had to play, put the eyes in. <coughs> Most, a lot of our trout, <coughs> various fishes have um, transparent fins. You can see you can see through the back of these, and you would paint them that way. In this case, and brown trouts are very opaque. You're not going to see that. So what we're going to do is primer this fish, and we're going to white these out <coughs> um, <coughs> to be more realistic uh, in relation to what browns look like. They're generally darker. So. Um, I'm going to start off by, <clears throat> I have already attached these fins, I put a little bit of filler around them, <clears throat> sanded them down, now I'm going to put some primer on these, and you have to kind of consider this as like the canvas of the fish. Uh, my job is to try to get these scales in here to really pop out and give the illusion that there is reflection to them, and that's what we use our paints for. We have to start off with the skin, think of as if, the, as if these scales were not even there. And we need to think of that, start with that underlayer. So we have a white, going to have a white blank canvas. We're going to lay down some silver on here, a couple other colors. <clears throat> we're going to seal that. And then we're going to start building our layers on top of that. I'm going to start with lighter colors because of what the effect that I want to get. If you have a darker color underneath, <clears throat> those, this, the scale tipping is going to be a lot um, brighter. It's going to pop. Um, the lighter is the less um, pronounced it's going to be. And, and depending on the species that you're doing, that's kind of the effect you want. In this case, we're not getting, because it's more of an opaque fish, we're going to get some, some uh, silver tipping in here, but it's not going to be solid like you might see on a salmon or a trout that's fresh out of the ocean or very bright <coughs> silver fish. This trout, I'm going to begin by adding a um, powder pigment, which is a multi-aluminum, uh, multi-leaf aluminum. I'm going to apply this to the center of the fish down towards the belly, a little bit on the head area, not on the top, but on the gill covers and down over bronchial steel rays, <clears throat> and uh, just the areas where I'm going to want that silver to be more prominent. So I'm going to apply that with a light uh, Maxine's mop and just rub it in, massage it into the fish. So we'll begin right here in the center and just kind of work this in. And basically, I'm massaging the fish. <clears throat> it's kind of nice and easy, like. using, I need this silver through the center area right here. So I wanted to come back and to make sure that was pretty prominent and then along the face. Now what I'm going to do is come back with this a pale uh, gold color powder. I'm going to put along this bottom and along the head and the top and the back and then leave this center open. That's going to set kind of frame in where I'm going to be doing my spot patterns for this particular brown. What we're doing here is applying some heat so it'll allow this to dry very well. 
and we just put a sealer on it when that sits up then we have all of our base these under oil colors for our canvas we're going to then begin to apply oh, over paint layer to seal it and we uh, do what we call an antique processing it's like uh, taking a kind of a a um, almost a graphite wash it's kind of a grayish wash we use a color called Payne's gray and we airbrush it over the top of the existing colors to darken it in like this both front and back and then what I'm going to do now is take some steel wool and as I remove that it's going to leave the remnant of this here so I'm just going to kind of go circular motion With the antiquing on, this is kind of what we have right here. You can, it, you can see how it kind of creates highlights. You can see the color coming through and yet the dark is still there in between those, that scale texture.